Hey friends, Michael Warren here from Essential Guitar Lessons and let's learn all about music theory for guitarists. This is part two, so make sure you've watched part one before you tackle this one and I'll put a link in the description for you. Don't forget if you like this lesson to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Songs and lessons uploaded weekly. If you have any problems with the lesson, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you. So the next few lessons we're gonna cover reading and writing music. This is really important to know just the basics. We don't have to go too nuts but we need to know enough to be able to move on with our theory. So we'll just cover what we need to know. Again, this is a massive subject. If you want to learn how to sight read and understand all written music back to front, it can take years of practice and study. So as I said, we'll just be doing the basics and there's still a lot to learn there, but we're gonna do enough to be able to get you through all the theory. So in this lesson, we'll have a look at basic rhythm. We won't be doing compound time signature, meters, accents, and other rhythm concepts. We're just doing the basics to get you started. We'll cover those other topics in later lessons. Now there's three basic parts to music, melody, harmony, and rhythm. We're gonna start with basic rhythm, because if we don't know note values and what a note looks like, we can't go any further. So let's get into it. So our timing can be quite ambiguous. It's not a perfect system, but it's the best we've got. So you may hear people talking about different time signatures for the same song, and both sides can have a case there. Now with this lesson, you wanna take as many notes as you can, although we're only doing basic timing, it's still quite confusing. So the first thing with rhythm we need to know is that every song has a pulse, or we call it a beat, or if you're using a metronome, it's the click. And that's what we instinctively tap our foot to or nod our head, or we can clap along with. Now, most of us can do this without even thinking about it. And this comes in regular intervals, so the same amount of time between each pulse or beat. So we never want... Always the same time between each pulse. And that could be faster or slower. Or a slow one. Now the beat or the pulse is what we count when it comes to music. We're just counting that pulse C. So that's pretty easy. Every song has a pulse or a beat, which always comes in regular intervals. So the same amount of time between each pulse or beat, and this is what we count. The next thing we need to know is tempo. And that just means how fast or slow our pulse or our beat is going. So a fast song will have a fast tempo. A slow song will have a slow tempo. So you notice the pulses all still have regular intervals whether we go faster or slower. Now the tempo is measured in beats per minute, so BPM. So how many pulses or how many beats we have in one minute. So that's what tempo means, just how fast or slow our pulse is going. So at the start of every piece of music, it will say tempo or beats per minute, so BPM. Then there'll be a number, so it could be 120, it could be 60, it could be 240. Now you won't get numbers under about 40 or above about 250. Now this is not a rule that can happen, but it is rare. And you can have any number between those two, the 40 and the 250. And that number tells us the beats per minute. So how many pulses or beats we have in a minute. So how fast or how slow our tempo is. So now we know what tempo is, how fast or slow our beat or pulse is, and what the number means. So how many beats or pulses we have in a minute. Now we need a way to measure it. We don't just guess and try and fit, say, 120 beats in a minute. So for this, we use a metronome. So we have our old school metronomes. Or you can download a free app to your phone. And this will just click in regular pulses at a set tempo. So if we look at the tempo of our song, it might be 120. Then we set our metronome and that number. And with our old school metronomes, we just drag the weight up or down. And it has numbers along the side to set the tempo. Or we just set the right tempo on our app. Mm -hmm. 
and that's what we count and that tells us what tempo the song is so how fast our metronome is clicking so we can set our metronome so we know how fast or how slow our pulses need to be so now we have the pulse or the beat and this comes in regular intervals so same amount of time between each beat and this is what we count then we have the tempo and this is how fast or slow our pulse or beat is then metronome which we set at the tempo or the BPMs we are given at the start of our music and this keeps us in time so we know exactly how fast or slow to play. The next thing we need to know is bar lines and measures or bars. So with music we break the pulses up into even counts. So it just makes the music and counting the pulses easier to read. So we don't have to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, we're just counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, or it may be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, or even 1, 2, 1, 2. So lots of different ways we can count the pulses and we break them up into even counts. Now we use the bar lines to break those counts up and we have a few different types of bar lines and we'll look at the most common. Now at the end of these basic reading music lessons, I'll put a piece of music and label each part so you can see how it all works in a real world situation. So the first one is just a single line and when we get to one we just keep playing through. Remember it's just a way of breaking the music up into smaller sections. So whenever you get to a single bar line, just keep playing. Now you'll have lots of bar lines in a piece of music and the part between the bar lines we call the bar or the measure. And this is where we place the notes and the other musical symbols. Now we also number the measures or bars with a number so we can identify where we are easily. So if I was playing with a group of musicians, I could just say start from bar 15 and we don't all have to count the numbers there. So that's a single bar line. When we get to one, we just keep playing. And the parts between the bar line is called the bar or the measure. Now to end our piece of music we use a double bar line with the second line being thicker than the first and that ends the song. So when we get to this, just stop playing, that's pretty easy. We also have a double bar line that are the same thickness and this just indicates the end of a section of music and the beginning of the next and we just keep playing through like we did with a single bar line. The next one we'll look at is a double bar line where the second line is thicker and we have a double dot in front of the lines. And this can appear anywhere in the piece of music. It could be in the middle or it could be at the end. And this is a repeat. So when you get to it, we just go back to the start of the song, play all the way through again. And when you get to it again, continue on with the song. If it's in the middle or if it's the end, just finish the song there. So if we get to our repeat, we play through, get to the repeat, go back to the start of the song, play all the way through, keep going and play to the end of the song. If it's at the end of the song, we just play all the way through, get to the end, go back to the start and repeat all again. Now the last one is a double bar line, the first line being thicker than the second and it'll have double dots after it. And this is the first bar of the repeat. So if you see one of these, there will also be a repeat that we just spoke about. Now as you play through your song, the first time you come to this repeat, you just play through like a single bar line. Then when you get to the second repeat, you go back to the start repeat, not back to the start of the song. So we're just repeating the section between these two repeats. So they're the main bar lines you'll see in written music. We have the single line, and that just means we play over it. We can have a double line, and we just keep playing through there. It's the end of a section. We have our double line again, which ends our song. We have our repeats as well. And these are just breaking the pulses up so it's easier to count. So the next thing we need to know is what a note is and the parts. So as we said in the first lesson, a note is just the sound we make on our instrument. So that's a note there. That's a note there. So any string, any fret and the open strings as well is a note. It's also a musical symbol that tells us what pitch to play and the duration of that pitch. So how long it goes for. By itself, it doesn't actually tell us anything. It needs to be on a staff, which we'll get to. And we also need a time signature or at least a time signature. And we'll get to that as well. So let's have a look at the parts of the notes now. 
Now different notes will have different parts, so let's go through them. So we have a note head, and that can be hollow or solid. We have a stem, and that goes up or down. Now if the stem goes up, it's on the right side of the note head. If the stem goes down, we put it on the left side of the note head. And we'll have a look at which one to use in the next lesson. Now it doesn't matter whether the stem goes up or down, it doesn't change the note. We just use it to make the music neat when we're writing it. Then we have a flag, and that always goes on the right side of our stem. So whether the stem goes up or down. Now we can put multiple flags on the stem, and we can also join the notes with the flags together. So if we join the notes with flags together, we have a beam. So any note with a flag or multiple flags can be joined together. So if I join them together, it doesn't change the note again, it's just for neatness. And that's it to the parts of the notes. That's pretty easy there. We have our note head, our stem, and our flags. So to keep track of what we've done, we now know what the pulse is or the beat comes in regular intervals, the tempo, and that tells us how fast our pulse or beat is. We have the metronome, which keeps us in time, and we can set for our tempo there and the parts of the note. So let's move on there. So each note has a value, so how many beats it holds for. So let's have a look at what each note looks like and what its value is or how long we hold each note for. So it's best to think about this like a pizza and we'll be breaking that pizza up into smaller and smaller parts. And now this will make sense as we get into it. Now with these, we're gonna put a number next to each group. And this number will tell us how many times each group of notes goes into a whole note. And again, this will make sense as we get into it. So we have a whole note, and that's just a note head, or just a circle with nothing in the middle. And that's called a semi-brief or a whole note, and you can call it either there. So think of it like a whole pizza, and we'll put a one next to that. Then we have a half note or a minimum, and again, you can call it either. We have a hollow note head with a stem. So think of that as half of your pizza, and we need two of them to make up a whole pizza. So we put a two next to that, because we need the two notes to make a whole note. Then we have a quarter note, which is also called a crotchet. This is a filled in note head with a stem, and this is worth one quarter of our pizza. So we need four of them to make up a whole pizza, two of them to make up a half. So we put a four next to that because we need four of them to make a whole note. Then we have eighth notes, also called quavers. So this is a note head with a stem and one flag and this is worth one eighth of our pizza so we need eight of them to make up a whole pizza two of them to make up a quarter four of them to make up a half and we can join them together using a beam if we want to so we put an eight next to that and as you can see it's all started to make sense now hopefully we put the eight next to it because we need eight of them to make up one whole note then we have a 16th note or a semi-quaver, and this is a note head with a stem and two flags. So we say double flags there. We need 16 of these to make up our whole pizza. Two for the eighth, four for a quarter, and eight for a half there. And again, we're gonna put 16 next to that. Now these next ones are a little bit rare. We have the 32nd note or a demi-semi-quaver. This is a note head and a stem with three flags, and we need 32 of them to make up our whole pizza. We also have 64th notes, and they're called hemi-demi semi-quavers, and have four flags, and we need 64 of them to make up our whole pizza. And we have 128th notes as well, called semi-hemi-demi semi-quavers, and we have five flags on those. Now these last few are rare, because as we're going down, we're playing faster and faster. We have to fit 128 notes into the same space we play a whole note, so you can see we're gonna be playing really fast there. Now we also have dotted notes, and we just put a dot after our note, so we can call it a dotted half note, or a dotted crotchet, or a dotted quarter note there. And we can do this with any of the notes. And with a dotted note, we take the value of the original note, so let's say it's a half note, we halve it and add them together, so we'd have a half note and a quarter note, and we put them together there. I could also have a quarter note, and if I halve that, it gives me an eighth, so now I have a quarter plus an eighth there. 
We can also have two or three dots after a note, but this is much rarer. And what we do, we halve the value of the second half and the same with the three dots, but again, they're rare. So that's the name of the notes and their values. So we must remember all of these and you can write out that chart or print it off the net as well. Now in music, we also have symbols for rest. That just means we don't play and we want the note to stop. So we don't want it to ring over the rest. I don't want to be playing a note and let it ring over the rest. I actually want to play a note and stop it. So we think about our rest the same as we did our notes, like a slice of pizza. We have a whole rest, which would be a whole pizza there. We have a half rest, a quarter rest, an eighth rest, a sixteenth, a thirty-second, a sixty-fourth, and a hundred and twenty-eighth there. So now rest is going to be also dotted, and it works the same way as our dotted notes. Now before we finish with our notes, we could also tie notes together, and for that we use a tie. So we just play the note once and add the two values together. And we normally do this when there's a bar line in the middle. So we've run out of counts and we'll get to that down the track as well. So now we have our beats or pulses, what the tempo does, our bar lines, measures, what a note is and its parts, note values, dotted notes and ties and the rests. Now it's best now to stop and review, make sure you know all this before you move on and can remember all we've talked about. If you need to watch it a few times, that's okay and take plenty of notes. So we have our beats, our pulses, our tempo, metronome, bar lines, measures or bars, what a note is and its parts, notes, rests and their values. So now let's have a look at some simple time signatures. Now all the things we've discussed we needed to know before we looked at our time signature and every piece of music has a time signature and it gives our song its beat or its feel. Now there's four different types of time signatures, simple, compound, complex and mixed or added. Because we just want to know the basic in this lesson we'll just be looking at simple time signatures and we'll cover the rest in later lectures. Now with our rhythm we also have accents and meters but again we'll cover those in later lessons. We want to try and keep this as simple as possible and it already is quite confusing. So as I said the time signature gives the song its beat or its feel and has two numbers one on top of the other. Now it's not a fraction, it doesn't have a line between the numbers, it's just two numbers on top of each other and each number represents something different. So the top number tells us how many beats there are in a bar and the bottom number is the value of those beats. So let's jump in a little bit deeper there. Let's start with the top number because that's normally the easiest to understand. Now with simple time, the top number will always be a two, a three or a four. If it's a different number, it's no longer simple time. It could be compound time or one of the others. And the top number tells us how many pulses or how many beats there are in a bar and every bar will have that number of pulses. So if we're counting, we could have one, two, three, four. If it's got a four on the top, if it's got a three on the top, it'd be one, two, three, one, two, three. If it's got a two on the top, we'd be counting one, two, one, two. As we said, all evenly spaced there. So that's all the top number is. How many pulses we have in a bar, and then we're putting our bar line. So one, two, three, four, bar line, and then one, two, three, four, bar line. It's breaking our pulses up to make them easier to read. And that's the top number there. Now let's have a look at the bottom number. At first, we'll just look at the numbers we can use, not what they're doing. Now with time signatures, the bottom number will always be a note value. Now this rule can be broken, but it's rare. So a half note, a quarter note, an eighth note. So if I bring up our note chart, we can see what numbers we could use. I could have a one again, which is very rare, a two, a four, an eight, a 16, and again, the rare ones, 32, 64th, and 128 there. So the most common is the four on the bottom, followed by the eight, then a two, then a 16. They're the ones you're gonna see most often. So that's just the numbers we could use on the bottom. There are note values there. And as we can see, that's how many times each note goes into our whole note there. So the bottom number tells us what each pulse is worth. So what note do I use to represent a pulse? And remember the pulse is what we're counting. So the top number tells us how many pulses there are in a bar. 
and the bottom number tells us what each pulse is worth. So let's have a look at how to do this and how it works. We'll start with 4-4 four, because four, that's the most common. First thing we'll look at is the top number. So we have a 4, so we know there's 4 pulses in a bar. Now we'll put a count there to represent the pulses. Now because we're in 4-4, four, four, we put a count of 4 and then a bar line. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, bar line, 1, 2, 3, 4, bar line, and we continue that throughout the piece of music. Now when we write music, we don't actually write the pulse numbers there. That's just so you can see how the pulses work. So the bottom number tells us what each pulse or beat is worth. So we go to our chart and because the bottom number is four, we find the note that goes into a whole note four times and that's a quarter note. So each pulse or beat is worth a quarter note. So because we have four pulses in a bar, which is the top number, and each pulse is worth a quarter note, I need four of them to make up a bar, and then I put my bar line. So this doesn't mean I can just use quarter notes, I can use any note that add up to the value of four quarter notes. We don't want any more or any less. So let's have a look at some there. So I could have four quarter notes, and then I put my bar line. I could have a half note plus two quarter notes, and then a bar line. I could have a whole note there, so we don't have to have quarter notes in the bar. I could have eight eighth notes there, or I could have a half note plus four eighth notes. Now we can even use rest there. I could have a quarter rest plus a half note, and then to finish that off, I have a quarter note. So we want every bar to add up to four quarter notes. So with that, I couldn't have five quarter notes because that's too many then. I couldn't have three half notes because again, that's more than what we need. When it comes to playing these notes, because the quarter note holds for one pulse, I must play a note on the second pulse, otherwise it's been held for too long. With the second bar, because the half note is worth two quarter notes, I must hold it for two pulses or two beats. So I'm holding it for two quarter notes there. So I was playing my quarter notes just on the E, one, two, three, four. A half note has to hold for two quarter notes. So one, two, three, four. So that would be a half note and two quarter notes. If I play two half notes, it'd be one, two, three, four. Again, I'm still counting there. Now you can see with the third bar, we have a whole note. So that's worth four quarter notes. So I must hold it for four pulses or four beats or four quarter notes. So now I just play one, two, three, four, and hold it there for the four quarter notes or our four beats. Now when we're playing those as well, I just play each time I get to a note and I count the pulses. So if I had quarter notes, I'd be counting one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. The half note and two quarter notes, I'd count one, two, three, four. So I'm playing each time the note comes and I know the values of those notes because of our pulses there as well. If I had the whole note, I'd just play one, two, three, four. Now when we're counting eighth notes, I count one and two and three and four and I don't speed the tempo up. So if my tempo is one, two, three, four, I'm just putting more notes in there. So it'd be one, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so I'm not going any faster. My pulse isn't speeding up. I'm just playing more notes. So one and two and three and four and or I could have one, two, three and four and or we could have our rest. So one, two, three, four. So that's four four timing because this is so common. We also call it common time and we use a C to represent that. So if you see a C, that's 4-4 four, four timing, and we can use both. We can either use the C, or we can just put the 4-4 four, four timing there. Now let's try 3-4 timing, start with the top number. Now we have a 3, so we have 3 pulses in our bar. So we'll be counting 1, 2, 3 instead of 4. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And it's normally a Walsh feel as well, 3-4 timing. So we have 3 pulses in a bar, and that's our top number. So the bottom number tells us what each pulse or beat is worth. So we go to our chart and because the bottom number is four, we find the note that goes into the whole note four times and that's a quarter note. 
So each pulse or beat is worth a quarter note. So because we have three pulses in a bar, which is the top number, and each pulse is worth a quarter note, this time I need three of them to make up a bar, then I put my bar line. So now I can have three quarter notes, so I'd be counting one, two, three, one, two, three. I could have a half note plus a quarter note, so one, two, three, one, two, three. I could use my eighth notes if I wanted to in counting one and two and three. I could also put it the other way around, I could have a quarter note and then a half note, so one, two, three. Now I could also use my 16th notes there. Now when we're counting 16th notes again, we don't speed the tempo up, we're just putting more notes in. So when we're counting 16th, we count one E and a, two E and a, three E and a. So we're playing every note again. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a. So again, I'm not speeding up the tempo. The tempo stays the same. I'm just putting more notes in. So one E and a, two E and a, three E and a. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a. So we're playing quite quick. So you can see we're like getting to 128. I'm going to be flying along with my picking. So with 3-4, we couldn't have a whole note because we know that adds up to four quarter notes. Or I couldn't have two half notes again because that adds up to four quarter notes. We can only have three quarter notes in a bar. And again, we could use our rest there as well. Now if I had 2-4 timing, it works the same again. My top number's two. So I have two pulses in a bar. So I can count one, two, bar line one two bar line one two bar line to the end of our piece of music now timing can change in music as well and there'll be another time signature there if it does change again this is fairly rare so if i had two four my top number's two so two beats in a bar my bottom number is four so i need the crotchet notes or our quarter notes there and i only need two of them for a bar so again i couldn't use a whole note or i couldn't use two half notes because we only wanted to add up to two quarter notes so i could use two quarter notes i could use one half note i could use my eighth notes and my sixteenth notes there to make up two quarter notes per bar now let's have a look if we have a two at the bottom so now we're changing the bottom number so we'll look at two two timing first so we look at our top number and that's a two so we have two beats in a bar. The top number hasn't changed from our two, four. Now we're doing two, two. So we're still counting one, two, one, two. We're counting our pulses there for the two. So the bottom number tells us what each pulse or beat is worth. So we go to our chart and because the bottom number is two, we find the note that goes into the whole note two times. And that's a half note. So each pulse or beat is now worth a half note. So I need two half notes to make a bar. Four quarter notes, I need eight eighth notes, or a combination of any of these notes to add up to two. So you can see how it's changed now. With the two on the bottom, our half note now equals a count of one, basically. So we can count our half notes as one there, and we're just counting one, two per bar. Now with two, two timing, it's also called cut time. And we write that with a C with a line through it. And we normally use 2 2 timing for marches. Now, again, it's starting to become more and more 2 2 because it's so close to 2 4 timing. And we'll have a look at that down the track as well. Now, we just need to know how to write it and how to count it. Now, I could also do 4 2 timing, and that's the same. I just need four pulses, and each pulse is going to be worth a half note there. And let's also have a look at. 3-8 timing. So again, we're changing the bottom note to the 8. Remember with simple time, the top number can be 2, 3 or 4 and a bottom number has to be a note value. And again, we can change that, but that's very rare. So if we're looking at 3-8 timing now, I need three pulses in the bar. So still I'm counting 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. So the bottom number tells us what each pulse or beat is worth. So we go to our chart and because the bottom number is eight, we find the note that goes into the whole note eight times and that's the eighth note or a quaver. So each pulse or beat is now worth an eighth note. So you can see I have three eighth notes, a quarter note, and one eighth note, and so on there. So each bar must add up to three eighth notes.
So you can think of it this way. When I change the bottom number, the note values change. So when there's a four on the bottom, the quarter note is worth one beat or pulse or one count. The half note is worth two counts. The whole note is worth four counts and so on there. When there's a two on the bottom, the half note is now worth one count. The quarter note is worth half a count and the whole note is worth two counts. When there's an eight on the bottom, the eighth note is now worth one count. The quarter note is worth two counts and the sixteenth would be half a count. So that's just another way of thinking about it there. So that's simple time signatures. Now there's a lot to take in as usual, but once you've had a few goes, reading and writing simple time signatures is not that hard. So just take your notes, go through it, watch it a few times if you need to. So thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell and I'll see you soon with part three.